Okay. Good evening. It is 5 30, so we'll go ahead and call this meeting order. Um, if I could just remind everybody to make sure that, well, you guys don't have microphones in there, do you? If you no. remember to turn your microphones on here, because I understand that people are, that call in are having difficulty hearing. So if you can just speak up, uh, we'll, we'll hope that uh, this works a little better tonight. So, hey, we'll go ahead and call the meeting order. We'll begin with the invocation. Andrew Lee, would you be so kind? Yep. Rob, we'd like to ask you for your uh, guidance and wisdom as we make decisions that will make massive improvements and uh, take care of our city for the long term in the future here tonight. And we ask that you will make sure that you look over our community and our state as we are dealing with this health crisis. In your name, amen. Amen. Roll call. Thank you. Ms. Lee. Here. Back in Stone. Here. Peterson. Here. Lucas. Here. Lee. Here. Carmen. Here. Reeker. Here. Ostendorf. Here. All right. Uh, I would like to go over the meeting procedure in case someone that is in the audience that's on the phone or on the Zoom. Uh, the public may address specific agenda items at the pleasure of the mayor. If recognized by the mayor, please state your name and address and limit remarks to three minutes or less. Out of respect to city employees, we request that any complaints or criticisms of employees not be aired in a public meeting. Concerns about the employees should be brought to the attention of the city administrator or mayor. An, an, an individual in violation will be declared out of order. Our Open Meetings Act, the current copy of the Open Meetings Act in Nebraska is posted on the wall at the back of the council chambers and in the conference room. We'll begin with um, uh, consent agenda. All matters under, con under consent agenda are considered by the city council to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. Any city council member may, however, remove an item from consent by request. All right, item number one is approved minutes of special meeting on April 1st, regular meeting on April 7th. 2020. Uh, item number two, approved application by the Platt Inc. DBA Platt Bar for a special designated license on June 19th, 2020 from 8 a.m. to 1 a.m. and June 20th, 2020 from 8 a.m. to 1 a.m. at the at, uh, Platt Bar, 119 West 6th Street for a beer garden. Item number three, the same application of Christopher Christopher Berglund as liquor license manager at Ruby Tuesday, located at 2320 South Jefferson Street, to the Liquor Control Commission with no recommendation. So we approve items one through three the consent agenda. Okay. Second. Roll call, please. Nisley. Aye. Backenstoes. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Lucas. Aye. Lee. Aye. Carmen. Aye. Reeker? Aye. Ostendorf? Aye. All right, motion passes. Regular agenda, item number four, approve mayor's appointment of Matthew Kibben for the position of city administrator. I move that we approve the appointment, mayor's appointment of Matthew Kibben for the position of city administrator. Second. And I, and I believe that Matt is online if anybody has any questions of Matt. Is there anything that you would like to say? Matt, would you like to say a few words? Uh, testing. Oh, yeah, we hear you. We hear you. Great. Well, I, I appreciate the thoughtful process associated with uh, uh, the position and look forward to serving the city of North Platte, working with all of you uh, to determine the priorities and also uh, in conjunction with the staff to assist you with those priorities. So again, I, I appreciate the opportunity and, and look forward to uh, beginning work as soon as I'm complete with self-quarantine, which uh, is tough on a day like today, uh, but that would be May 3rd. 
Okay, thank you, ma'am. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Nisley. Aye. Back and Sos. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Lucas. Aye. Lee. Aye. Carmen. Aye. Reeker. Aye. Austindorf. Aye. All right, thank you. Uh, congratulations, Matt. We'll, we're excited to get you started. Thank you. Yes, I, I did hear that. Oh, Thank you. You're welcome, Matt. Now you can tuck in and watch, I guess, if you, if you choose to do so. All right, uh, item number five, SID is Board of Equalization to approve assessment schedule for water extension district number 263, beginning at the existing water main at, on the 2000 block of West 18th Avenue, thence west approximately 255 feet, to the intersection of North Emory Avenue, then south along North Emory Avenue, approximately 195 feet, to the existing water main. And do we sit as a board of equalization and approve assessment schedule for water extension district number 263? Second. Nisley? Aye. Back and Stos? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Lucas? Aye. Lee? Aye. Carmen? Aye. Reeker? Aye. Ostendorf? Aye. All right, that motion passes, 8-0. Item number five, SID is, oh wait, I already did that one. Six, SID is Board of Equalization to approve assessment schedule for sanitary sewer extension district number 348 along East 6th Street starting at 1813 East 6th Street and continuing west approximately uh, 475 feet. Move that we sit as a board of equalization again and approve assessment schedule for sanitary sewer extension district number 348. Second. A question on, on this. Um, um, since this is outside of the city limits, uh, what type of notification is given to the respective landowners uh, that this is going to be taking place. This whole deal with Roosevelt kind of opened my eyes to some things and things that I wasn't aware of and maybe that's my responsibility but I'm, I'm just curious you know what what type of notification is given to the respective landowners. This is Tom here. Oh, yeah. Come on here we go. Thank you Tom. Yeah. <clears throat> Did you hear that question? Yes, I did hear the question. That was a good question. Um, actually, what we do is we send out uh, notices uh, to the people affected, but they are not sent by registered letter. They are merely sent, sorry, thank you. They are merely sent by uh, regular mail. And the reason for that is uh, uh, we had advice from the former attorney that we didn't need to send it by registered mail, that it could be just sent by regular mail. So the notice is sent out by regular mail. And were there any responses to those notices, Tom? Not that I'm aware of, Ed. I don't believe we got any responses. I'm sorry. I guess I'm wondering if maybe, uh, maybe on our notification, we should step this up a notch and make sure that these people are actually I mean that they recognize that they're getting a notification, maybe a maybe a registered letter or or something that draws their attention to it. I I guess from my own perspective, if I'm outside the city limits and I'm looking at the legal notices and if it pertains to the city, I'm not sure I would recognize something that might have a direct impact on me just because I don't live in town. And sure. uh, Obviously, if they were sent a notice and they overlooked it, that's one thing. If they didn't get it, then I guess we have no way of knowing that. Yeah. But I guess I'm wondering if maybe as a, just more of a, just a sense of duty that we send a, a uh, registered letter 
probably, I think a registered letter does require a, a return receipt if I'm not mistaken. And, and that way we would have a notice as well that the people were in fact notified and, and did in fact get the notification. Yes, that, and we do have his circumstances. We have, I recall in the past when we did those, we might get those back, but sometimes uh, a person might pass away or it for some reason isn't forwarded. We use the uh, addresses that tax uh, statements are sent to uh, to try to make sure we use the most uh, verifiable address we can find. Um, if we get them back, uh, I'm not sure what the protocol would be after that uh, because we have had them returned uh, without any um, indication of where they should have gone or in lieu of the address we had. So it, uh, it certainly can be done that way. It does get expensive and that cost goes back against the district again. So uh, that's part of the reason probably we haven't done it in the past because it got quite expensive for some of the projects we did. But we can certainly reinstate that if that's a desire of the council. You know, one thing that We've brought, we've had some prior discussions on it. On the front end of this type of project, it would have been up for free readings, correct? And I know a lot of times we're dealing with a situation where we're, somebody has an issue on their property and you're trying to manage that. But I know one thing I've learned through this process is to be very cautious about um, a waiver of uh, readings because I think that in some ways serves a similar purpose. I totally agree, Ty. I guess here is I, I think the council members have got some correspondence with regard to this matter, and, and, and I'm not saying anything, Tom, I'm not arguing with you. Right. It's kind of an unusual situation in the sense that uh, a property that has an assessed value of $39,000 was assessed $27,000 mm -hmm. in a sewer assessment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that, that is, uh, that's troublesome. Um, and the only comment I'll make, uh, and again, I, 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 I think we need to really take a look at this because this is not the first time people have come back on these assessments mm -hmm. and say why well, I, I didn't get the notice and you know you publish and the law requires you mail them a first class letter and i don't doubt that they get it sent but you know a lot of times that it, it ends up in the junk mail file mm -hmm. i mean you get something from a governmental agency i mean that's just the way people are mm -hmm. and uh i really um I think this should be probably reviewed again. We do need to do a little bit better job in noticing. Sure. I realize it's more expensive. And Tom, I, I'm not criticizing anything you've done. Right, I You're doing according to our direction. Okay. Uh, this is a troublesome case, and I, I don't know that there's anything we can do about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, that's quite an assessment for this landowner. Yes, and I, I understand that. You know, there's a couple circumstances. We did send it to the property owner of record. and. Unknown to us, that property owner had just had passed away. I don't know where uh, or why we didn't receive anything back, but we didn't that I'm aware of. And uh, so the person that inherited the property apparently is the one that's affected by it. But it is a substantial assessment. And as you know, uh, and we've discussed uh, these, these assessments anymore are getting very high uh, for anybody's property. And it's very, very difficult uh, uh, that's why land development is expensive to do and hard to do because uh, you have to do a big investment and you have a lot of investment in there before you even can sell a lot. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, it's going to make it harder to do uh, future uh, extensions of any type because of the expense involved. And I, I, I sympathize completely with the people that are affected by this. I understand completely what they're saying. Uh, it's really tough. Uh, absolutely. It's not, by the way, it's not fun to do either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So help me out, Tom. Mm -hmm. how, how do we come about with this assessed valley? Because I got the same correspondence mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. the business just next door, a couple doors down, is seven thousand less, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's valued at three hundred some thousand versus mm -hmm. thirty nine thousand. Help me out here. How sure, sure. Uh, we we always take the cost of the district. All the costs are incorporated in the district. And divide that according to the front footage of the property that's abutting the improvement. And then you apply the same cost for everybody's front footage, whether it's the city or whether it's somebody's already previously assessed. And then uh, the difference here is that 
the property that you mentioned that uh, the people have been so uh, uh, terribly affected, frankly, uh, was wider than the property that uh, received the most benefit in a sense that they were the ones that requested the improvements. So it's just by front footage. It's just straight front wow. footage. And we apply it according to cost per front foot. That's, that's how we do it. And Tom, uh, just to clarify what you're saying is, this is done on a front footage assessment. It's not based on analysis. No, benefits. no, and it's then, not at all. It, it actually, uh, we have to be scrupulous in, in being careful to assign the same cost per front foot per uh, the owner, regardless of owner, say. And uh, we do have instances where if uh, we are going through and we tear out somebody's driveway and they say, well, while you're here, would you take out this much more? Then we will assess it to that particular property because that's past what we would see as necessary to do the job. Otherwise, we only assess the absolute necessary components to complete a project. And, and the city, uh, even on an extension district, whether it's sewer water or matter, eats a lot of the cost. We, we, we pay a lot of money on districts, regardless of whether it's an extension district, connection district, because when we cross right away, that's assigned to us. Uh, if we go by an alley, that's assigned to the city. So. We try to do this uh, very carefully and, and uh, methodically and uh, it needs to be reproducible and comparable from one district to the next. It's, there's much more philosophy that goes into this than what you think would go into, a, into assessments. It's, 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 it's uh, more an art than a science, unfortunately, but it is. And when you just sit here and look at this scenario, a 300 and whatever, $300,000 property value versus 39,000 property value. That's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But again, keep in mind, and it's simple to forget, but keep in mind that it, the benefit accrues to the property and not the property owner. So even though the property may be improved, the land is what it benefits is the theory, not the improvements to the land, not who owns the land, not the status of that person or anything else. It's the land that is improved. And consequently, you have to look at purely at what's the land that's affected, whether that's a, uh, pardon me, but a junkyard or whether it's a, a castle, it doesn't make any difference. You have to strictly look at the improvement to the land only. Jerry? Yes, sir. Just asking a question. As far as we're concerned as a council, this front footage analysis is all we can go by. We're not, are we authorized? Hey, do we have any statutory discretion on this at all? Not that I'm aware of, Jim, unless there's a, some special procedure. And Jim Hawks and I talked about it. I understand the concern and the plight of the resident and the taxpayer, but I, the only thing I'm aware of is the procedure that's in front of you. And I don't know that we want to be in the position of saying, here's here's what you need to do in offering legal advice that could come back to be misconstrued in the event there's any, as you know, it, tax protests are jurisdictional, have to follow precisely the letter of the law. So my suggestion would be, we've complied with the statute, with the ordinance, and if the, again, with all due respect to the citizen who's been adversely impacted, if that person wants to to try to protest. I don't think we want to be in the position of saying, here's how you do it. But we're also, we conduct a public hearing on the front end of this, right? It, I mean, like for this situation, we had a public hearing on the, as the first step in this transaction or prior to any work being done, right. correct? I, you know, I, I guess at the formation of the ordinance, unless Jim could correct me, but I believe at that point there's a possibility for input. Uh, I don't know that it's called a public hearing. You recall, Jim? No, it's not, Tom. It's not advertised as public hearing. Uh, because, again, statutorily we're required to provide service to those people when it comes to water and sewer if they request it. So at that, just so I understand the process, so at that point, an ordinance comes forth to create the district, yes. at which I think the practice of the city has been to allow public input in those, in those uh, procedures. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thanks for clarifying that, Tom. You're welcome. And in that same statute, then Terry, it, it defines how the charges have to be assessed. Is that correct? I mean, the statute that obligates the city to do it on, yes, I think so. And it's certainly custom and tradition. It's the way it's always been done yes. for as long as I know. I guess one other question for you, Tom. Um, is is a registered letter a, the best way to notify these people or what are your thoughts? I, I would say it is. I, I would I would agree with that, Ed. I think a registered letter is a better way to do it because it's more likely that it will get through the postal system than conventional uh, a a a conventional letters. I know a slam on the postal system, but we've had problems with delivery and uh, unfortunately, so I, I think a registered letter would do a better job of getting to where it needs to go. Uh, I would agree with that. I was expecting an $8,000 check that was mailed on the 1st of April and I got it on the 19th and the day before it came, I called the bank and had payment stopped. <laughs> so, and, and it came from a cook. So uh, I don't know that we can rely on the, on the mail system very well. Jim, go ahead. Uh, it used to be that a registered letter did not always uh, require a return receipt. A return receipt in it and it actually cost an additional fee, postal fee. Is that still true? I think, yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. Return receipt requested. You, you just, does it, there is an additional fee, you're right, Jim. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I think that'd be a smart thing to do. Do we need to offer any guidance to? To Mr. Werblow, uh, in that regards, as a counselor, is that something that you can just take upon yourself to do? Well, we can, if that's the uh, the advice of the council, certainly we can do that. I'd be glad to do that. You know, it, it would help us because it doesn't help us to have people get surprised. I don't like it any better any better than anybody else does. You know, to to shock somebody with something, I I really don't like that at all because it's not helpful whatsoever for them or us. So yeah, I have no problem with it. Was that something, Dwight, that we probably need to put on the agenda for another meeting? Mm -hmm. no, I, I, think I don't think we need an agenda on it. We'll just do it. All right. How's that sound? It's fine with me. I agree with yeah. that. We can just take care of that okay. through our process. We can take care of that. That's pretty simple. Yeah, we can implement that. We were uh, acting on advice, like I said, of of, uh, of the former attorney, thinking to save money, et cetera. So. Um, so. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you, Tom. You Thanks, bet. Thanks, Tom. There's a gentleman out here in the hallway that would like to talk, I do believe. Do we need a motion there? Um, just a minute. Yeah. Would you be so kind as to give us your name and address, please? Yeah, John Erickson. I live at 170086, and I'm property belonged to my sister. And uh, I, I don't know what you want me to say. I do appreciate Mr. Lee. He did contact me back that he did receive the the memo evidently everybody else did and I really appreciate the fact that you paid attention to what what it was what it amounted to was Mr. Steele talked to me that's who we're talking about that he was going to pay for this it, it's no big deal you know they could have run it right past right across the, the street the concrete never crossed never crossed the alley or never crossed a road it was right in front of his place was the concrete the concrete was broke up the width of that sewer is only about this wide. Wide is this, because that backhoe goes across it. They put in 10 foot of new concrete on that. Uh, the, I think the con well, in the deal it showed you the concrete was $17,000. The benefits nobody except him. And the way that I see that is uh, somebody's getting hosed here and I believe it's gonna be me. I mean, common sense should enter into this here. Just the property value alone is what it is. His, his told me, he said the reason that he was doing this was because his workers come to work and they couldn't do that at home. They'd have to use his sewer system there and he was having to pay to pump his septic tank. And that was his reasoning for this. Well, anybody that, all you have to do is drive by there and take a look at it. 
And it's that simple. You got a stretch of concrete well longer than this room and it's not 10 foot wide. If, you get, if they do cross the street or cross an alley, whatever they do, and it wouldn't be right for the city or the, uh, the rate payers to e eat this concrete, but when it benefits a private drive for nothing more than, he didn't have to go the full length of it. it he could have came right up to the edge of his property and joined that sewer right there. But no, no, he went on past it. And uh, I mean, common sense should enter into this here. I, I mean, the rate payer, I mean, we, we did not get any correspondence on this. We checked, we checked her mailbox, we checked for things because we're still settling her estate thing and all that. And we didn't receive anything on it. And my wife has worked for the, worked for the city for 40 years or 46, whatever the hell it is. And she's familiar with sewer water and what it is and what the cost is. And it's never run over $50 a foot for property. And uh, I don't know how they come up with this, but regardless of it, the concrete alone is, is totally ridiculous. And all you have to do is, I, I sent pictures of it that you can see what it is. And uh, where they did the dirt, looks like my, the dirt work that they did is as wide as his concrete. Well, it damn sure wasn't because it just wide enough to drop the pipe in is all they do because they run over it with a, uh, a backhoe, you know, and it just runs right along there and they take it right out of there. And this was just, like I said, it benefited nobody but him. And I guess I'm probably getting close to my three minutes or whatever it is, but I, I think you guys would, I'd really appreciate you take a look at this and figure this out because this is just wrong. Thank you. Sir. Appreciate your time. Questions, comments? Hey, Tom, real quick. Tom. Hey, Tom. Tom. Yeah. On our recent ones, to that last comment there, you know, that was the thing that stuck out, you know, to me. Mm -hmm. What has been the cost of these kind of extension districts per, per foot? Uh, what the gentleman referenced, the $150 a foot, would be typical for a side. This was an expensive project. Part, a lot of the money that we spent was on dewatering because the groundwater was high enough, we had to build the sewer uh, in such a way that the, to uh, be able to, uh, we had, it would require dewatering and that's part of the reason for the width of it because of dewatering, I'm sure. But um, that, that wouldn't be out of the, uh, what we typically would do in a, in a dry installation. Um, so yeah, the, I, I understand what he's saying and I understand his, uh, is uh, concern and, and, uh, and his wife's concern, I understand them completely. But, you know, when we do these assessments, there's, if you start trying to parse out everything, it really gets tough. And, um, and uh, you know, the problem is where the sewer was requested was past their property. So we had to go past their property to do this, the sewer installation we did. And, and, um, and they got hooked in their district. So. And who, who requested the property? Who requested uh, uh, Mr. Did, Mr. Steele requested. Did, did we do this? I think we contracted this one out, right? Yes. And who did we use on this one? Midlands. Midlands. Midlands contracted did it. Yeah. Okay. We took bids and they were the low bidder. Thank you. Mm -hmm. On the determination of the width of the concrete, Tom, mm -hmm. I presume that was based on a survey that you guys did? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they, they didn't take out anything we didn't wouldn't have told them to take out at the time and i i believe that it was necessary to be that wide because of the the dewatering the dewatering pipe has to be set up parallel with the pipe installation so that when they excavate the trench is dry when they go through and uh that's the reason for the dewatering uh and for the trench width i'm sure okay thank you and I just have a quick carry. Yes, sir. The council, I mean, just looking at our options. If we were to say uh, the assessment as a council that we want the assessment changed to the to be assessed for against steel because they benefit, is that legal or not? Or is that with our, with our discretion? I don't think I, should, I, I can research that, Jim, and I'd feel more comfortable if you want me to research it and table it. But my 
initial reaction is no, that it's a traditional, as Tom pointed out, it goes to the benefit of the property, not the property owner. Yeah. While Mr. Erickson was speaking, it occurred to me perhaps his remedy is to go back to Mr. Steele. If he relied, if he in fact relied to his detriment on a promise that uh, may or may not have been made, you, you know, and you understand the elements of detrimental reliance. If he's saying he would have done something differently, but for that promise, perhaps he has a claim against the adjoining property owner. I don't see that the council has much you could do at this point. I, I'm happy to research it to see if there's a different alternative. But, uh, unless Tom or Jim is aware of something. I'm, I'm, not, aware. I'm not aware of anything. Well, it's hard. I'm, I'm having trouble hearing you with this Darth Vader thing going on here, but. Uh, I, I'm happy to talk to you afterwards if you want to. <laughs> yeah, because I just, like I said, I, it, all you have, just to look at it, I mean, you can't help but figure out what it is. And uh, I don't do work for the city, but I know he does. That, you know, I don't know if it's the good old boy thing or how it is, but I'd like to think it wasn't here, but it damn sure makes you wonder. It sounds to me like maybe to alleviate any concerns that we should have Mr. Wake review this and make sure that we've got exactly what the statute requires and that way there's no uh, discrepancy or misunderstanding. So with that in mind, I guess I'd make a motion we table this till our next meeting. We do already have a motion to call that to right. approve. So they would, they would have to. Yeah. Exactly. Withdraw the motion because there's already a motion in the second to approve. Right. Okay, real quick. I mean, if you don't want to remove your second, I can remove the motion. We can table it. But my question then is, is there anything we can do about it? Yeah. That's what they're looking at. That's what they're, looking at. <coughs> they're going to do the research to see if we can. Okay. I'll withdraw my motion I'll withdraw, in a second. I'll withdraw the motion. Okay, I'll make a motion that we table this till our next meeting. With the understanding that Mr. Wade will give us some further direction at our next meeting. Appreciate it. Nisley? Aye. Backenstos? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Lucas? Aye. Lee? Aye. Carmen? Aye. Reeker? Aye. Ostendorf? Aye. And the motion passes. Thank you. John, thank you. I appreciate, appreciate you guys. For listening. Yeah, that, that was uh, good. All right, item number seven. Action to approve ordinance number 4034 to create clean energy assessment district to establish definitions to provide the financing administration and collections to promote energy efficiency improvements and renewable energy systems. You'd like me to read the ordinance? Yes, please. An ordinance of the mayor and city council of the city of North Platte, Nebraska to create a clean energy assessment district to establish definitions to provide for the financing, administration, and collections to promote energy efficiency improvements and renewable energy systems and to provide for the effective date hereof and publication in pamphlet form. Quick question. Um, Terry, with item number eight, do we have to suspend in order to approve item number eight? There was no recommendation on it, but. No, I don't think so. You don't need to? Okay, cool. So I would move that we adopt ordinance number 4034 on first reading. Second. Ask a quick question. Sure. Um, in, uh, in, E2, mm -hmm. the administrator of the program has the ability to waive an estimated economic benefit requirement in the program. How, I, it, it, is the economic benefit of the program the, the, diff, the utility savings versus the code standard? Yes. Okay, and so I was surprised to see that because the, the whole program is based, the cash flows are based off the increment between the code um, energy cost estimate and the and the the greener method or the more energy efficient method, and so the waiver of that surprised me as us having um, 
administrative discretion to alter that on an application. So I'd be interested in learning about that. Well, the only thing I would say to that, Ty, is, is that somewhere along the line, in order to be able to put those estimates together and look at the type of equipment that would fall into this, whether it be insulation, HVAC, windows, doors like that, somebody is going to have to do some kind of an economic analysis on it. So even though it, it allows you to waive that, uh, I would be very surprised if that's ever done. Uh, because again, somehow or another, you're going to have to know what that number is in order to be able to, to make your project worthwhile. The other thing I might point out, if you remember right, uh, it was back in uh, October 14th of 2019 when Mr. Peterson came in and, and presented this. And the first thing that came to my mind uh, we have a, a motel developer who wants to use this as part of his finance package. But if you get into the digging into the facts here, what I see is this is an excellent type of a product. It could also be used on projects like the Pawnee Hotel and some of our other buildings in the downtown area because you know that more than likely you're going to have to go back in there. You're going to be looking at windows, doors. HVAC systems and those kinds of things. So I think, you know, I would remind the council to kind of look past, you know, the reason for this project being brought forward now and look at the future when you look at some of these older buildings that we have around the community that could very definitely take advantage of this type of, of finance. Is this an annual approval? No, once it's in ordinance. So what did we do last October? We didn't do anything. It was a work session. Just a presentation. Yeah, it was okay. a work session. Right. I, I did not have the benefit of hearing Mr. Peterson last October. But I did speak at length to him. My understanding is he's a, available tonight. He did not want to attend in person. But I understand he's available tonight if you have additional questions. This, this just follows statutory language. There's no risk to the city. It's just an additional alternative means of financing. Yeah. I'm in favor of the program. I just had a concern about an administrative waiver on what I thought, what it looks like the whole basis of the program. But I'm curious, maybe there's small things that pop up that you can't make an economic analysis on or things of that yeah. nature that you've dealt with. And, and that, and that could be, but like I say, yeah. somebody's going to have to put a pencil to that right before they go with it. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to hold it up on that issue. I just, it, it surprised me that you'd have the whole program and then they could administratively waive off that analysis on it. Nisley? Aye. Back in Stoves? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Lucas? Aye. Lee? Aye. Carmen? Aye. Reeker? Aye. Ostendorf? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Um, item number eight, adopt a resolution approving the city of North Platte, Nebraska property assessed clean en energy PACE program, a PACE manual, a PACE application, and a PACE contract form to be used for assessment contracts approved by the city. Move to adopt resolution approving the city of North Platte, Nebraska, uh, property assessed clean energy PACE program, a PACE manual, a PACE application, and a PACE contract form to be used for assessment contracts approved by the city. Okay. So, quick question, Mayor. It's okay. Sure. Um, we're, I didn't find the manual, the application, the contract. And so, are, are we supposed to have those? Or, as part, I mean, are we approving those as part of this? I didn't realize those were not attached. I did send them to you just a little bit ago. Oh, okay. Like but those are only examples. And okay. that could be directed to something that's your final form. So okay. You're not tied to this. Okay, so this is more just a resolution to have on a manual and application and a form. Exactly. Okay. Then I'm fine. Thank you. I'll look at those separately. Thank you. Nisley? Aye. Back in Stoves? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Lucas? Aye. Lee? Aye. Carmen? Aye. Reeker? 
Aye. Austin Dorf. Aye. Motion passes. Item number nine, third and final reading and action on ordinance number 4026 to vacate a 25 foot frontage road line north of the adjacent to the north line of lot five and six, block three, Meadow Brook Estate, North Platte, Lincoln County, Nebraska. Would you like me to read the ordinance? Yes, please. An ordinance of the mayor and council of the city of North Platte, Lincoln County, Nebraska, vacating a certain portion of a frontage road, providing for the vesting of title of said vacated frontage road, and providing for the effective date of this ordinance and publication thereof. I move that we adopt number 4026 on third and final reading. Second. Roll call. Nisley. Aye. Backenstos. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Lucas. Aye. Lee. Aye. Carmen. Aye. Reeker. Aye. Austindorf. Aye. That motion passes. Item number 10, third and final reading on action and action on ordinance number 4027 to rezone certain land from an A1 transitional agricultural district to a RL a suburban residential district located at 3301 South Bear Avenue, described as lots five and six, block three, Meadowbrook Estates and the proposed 25 foot vacated frontage road line north of adjacent to the north line of said lots, North Platte, Lincoln County, Nebraska. Would you like me to read the ordinance? Yes, please. The ordinance of the city of North Platte, Lincoln County, Nebraska, zoning a portion of a vacated frontage road and lands in lots five and six, block three, Meadowbrook Estates, proposed Twidwell first replat, North Platte, Lincoln County, Nebraska. From an A1 traditional transitional agricultural district to an RL suburban residential district. Repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict or with, providing for the effective date and publication thereof. Move that we adopt ordinance number 4027 on third and final reading. Second. Roll call please. Nisley. Aye. Backenstos. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Lucas. Aye. Lee. Aye. Carmen. Aye. Reeker. Aye. Ostendorf. Aye. Motion passes. Um, item number 11, adopt resolution approving claims and authorize the issuance of a warrant to Nebraska Safety and Fire Equipment Inc. in the amount of $175, a warrant for a cement product inc. in the amount of $92,318.80, a warrant to Midlands Contracting Inc. in the amount of $101,969.55, and a warrant to Paulson Inc. in the amount of $368,661.85 to pay approved claims and referring to and incorporating the terms of conditions ordinance number 3874 relating to warrant financing passed and approved on May 21st of 2013. Move that we adopt resolution approving claims and authorizing the issuance of a warrant for Nebraska Safety and Fire Inc. in the amount of $175, a warrant for cement products Inc. in the amount of $92,318.80, warrant to Midlands Contracting Inc. in the amount of $101,969.55, and a warrant to Paulson Inc. in the amount of $368,661.85 to pay approved claims and referring to and incorporating the terms and conditions of ordinance number 3874 relating to warrant financing that's approved on May 21st of 2013. Second. Roll call. Nisley. Aye. Backenstos. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Lucas. Aye. Lee. Aye. Carmen. Aye. Reeker. Aye. Ostendorf. Aye. And that motion passes as well. Item number 12 is claims. Move that we pay the claims. Second. Roll call. Nisley. Aye. Backenstos. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Lucas. Aye. Lee. Aye. Carmen. Aye. Reeker. Aye. Ostendorf. Aye. And that passes as well. 
And what we have left is an adjournment if anyone cares. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Ms. Lee. Aye. Backenstos. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Lucas. Aye. Lee. Aye. Harmon. Aye. Reeker. Aye. Austindor. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate your time.